Hello, my name is Manuel Traut. I'm from Linotronics and I did a lot of stuff uh, in the area of Debian based build systems and Yocto BSPs over the last couple of years. And uh, I learned both sides of the world have their, their pros and their cons. And so I thought, isn't there any possibility? to combine those two worlds. And this is something I wanted to talk with you today. So what's next? First, I want you to show the reasons why people out there are using Yocto and why they like it. Then I want to talk about Debian and especially about Debian for embedded systems. And then I will light out the benefits of a combination of these two worlds. and because it's maybe a good combination. Uh, there are already existing solutions out there in the field that combine those two techniques uh, or frameworks or distributions or however you will call it. And then I will give you an idea about wha what's in my head about the perfect combination of those two worlds. So. Let's talk about why we are using Yocto. First, let's see what's Yocto, then uh, have a look at the typical usage of it and learn about the limitations. So Yocto is basically tooling for building your own Linux distribution and your development environment for building applications for this new distribution you created. Uh, so it defines a format uh, for you that is sharing your uh, receipts that describe your packages and your uh, content of your board support packages and your root file systems. And this is quite a powerful format because you can just say, okay, I grab some layer from my hardware vendor. I use this one from uh, my chip vendor and then I add my own layer and all those layers contain uh, different uh, receipts and you even have the possibility to overload receipts that describe how a certain software package is built in your own layer uh, even if the package is described in for example the layer of your hardware vendor so it's also a big management tool and uh, beside that, you just can do that for one BSP. You can even do that for all your BSPs in your company. So if you have 10 similar BSPs, for example, for different types of hardware, with one, for example, with a large display, another one with a smaller one, and uh, maybe one with the high-end application and one with some stripped-down application, then you can build all those combination images and of course, they, they share a lot of receipts uh, or packages with each other. So you need to maintain this combined set of packages just once. So all of that is based on a project called Open Embedded. And the Open Embedded and the Yocto project is uh, working closely together. So if you have a look, for example, at the Open Embedded JIT repository and at the Pocky JIT repository, which is the example distribution of the Yocto project, you will see that there are nearly the same commits in both repositories and there's just a merge of the Pocky example distribution inside this JIT repository. So how do people typically use it? Uh, they use the Pocky example distribution, then they add some meta layers from their chip or hardware vendor, maybe they add third party layers, for example, for adding Qt5, and then they add on top their own layer with image customization, with receipts for their own applications. So basically, it's a really nice thing, but uh, all nice things have limitations, you know? So. What's the problem? The problem is you basically build your own distribution. So you need to maintain your own distribution and maintaining as a hard work. So uh, you get those receipts from those different layers, but uh, you need to check are 
the, uh, the patches applied I'd like to have on these several software components. Are those layers compatible with each other? Because uh, the BitBake build engine might be uh, uh, depend on the version of the receipts you use and so on. So, and then you have, for example, three layers. One is available for the Morty release, another for the Krogot release, and then you need to combine them. And then you need to really to do some work to get your distribution compiling, working. And if this all works, then you go to the maintenance uh, part of your distribution. So you need to check are there security updates and so on. Um, also, the quality of the receipts uh, is quite hard to verify. So, you, of course, there are a lot of layers outside in the net, but if I integrate them into my project, I need to review do those receipts. I need to check what patches do they apply. Is this okay for me? So, there's some work to do. Also, there is no long-term support distri example distribution available. So. If you use, for example, the Pocky receipt set, uh, they maintain uh, the current and the last uh, branch, but if you need longer support, you need to upgrade all receipts. Also, the reproducibility is not completely given because you always have some small tools, but you have them. That, uh, that depend on your host machine, so it might give different build results if you build on a different host machine. Uh, so there are quite some limitations you need to solve. So some people think about, oh, there are other distributions out there. They can do the work for me for creating a distribution. And one ex example of those distributions is Debian. So Debian is called the universal OS as a slogan. And so you might ask, is it that univer universal that I even can use it for embedded? Let's see. Then we will have a look at the usage of Debian for embedded projects. We will have a look at, of course, even Debian has limitations, so let's see what they are. And some of those limitations we at Linotronix tried to solve with a tool called Elbe. And I want to explain you some words about what Elbe is doing and how it can help you. So the universal OS uh, is, uh, in the end, more than a pure operating system because it comes with over 51,000 open source packages, pre-packed in a binary format for different architectures. And also, the whole infrastructure of this operating system, the documentation and the build tools are available as open source. So if you want, you can set up an environment in your own company, in your lab, to rebuild everything from scratch. It's documented and it's available as open source. Another thing is Debian takes security very seriously. So you have update channels for the current stable and the old stable uh, release of Debian that covers about until six years of security updates. And many of those security updates are coordinated with other free software vendors like Red Hat, Ubuntu and so on, and SUSE. And they are published at the same day a vulnerability is made public. So basically, if you maintain your own distribution, then the day the vulnerability vulnerability is made public is the day you can start working on the security issue and this is the time if you use uh, one of those big distros you have the the package bi package binary package available so is it possible to use debian in embedded uh, systems so basically it is you have packages available for a lot of different architectures uh, there are cross tool chains available since Stretch for different architectures. So, yeah, you might use it. Uh, so, for example, in the last talk about the civil infrastructure project, we saw the commitment uh, that they want to use Debian as a source for their uh, distribution. So, there are even other peoples that think about using Debian in the embedded world. And the usage 
is typically if you want to use the binary Debian distribution, you use dbootstrap to uh, get an embedded root file system, for example, for the ARM, uh, bootstrapped into a single uh, directory of your computer. Then you can might use uh, tools like the package builder, pbuilder, or sbuild, and a uh, cross compiler or a QEMU emulated compiler to build your own application inside this root file system directory. After that, you typically remove all those unneeded files like man pages, internationalization, and so on to get your embedded system even smaller. And then you build some file system images for extended fear, force, for UB, and so on, whatever you need on your target. And then you have the job to extract all those license information and retrieve the source code of all your packages you used in your embedded architecture um, to uh, publish it to your consumers. So, what are the limitations if you want to use Debian in your embedded product? Uh, you have only a limited number of hardware architectures supported, as I described uh, two slides before. So, if you have another architecture that is not listed there, you would need to bootstrap Debian from sources, and this is something we talk uh, later about. Um, also, there are no hardware-specific binary packages uh, available for, for Debian. So, for example, if you have a GStreamer plugin for IMX6, you, you don't get the binary package. You need to build it by yourself. You need to do those file system and UBI and so on, image generation by yourself. Even you need to generate the SDK yourself. You get the tool chains, you have multi arch support and stretch that you can cross compile on your PC for ARM. But if you want to ensure that you have exact the same versions of, of libraries in your tool chain, you have an additional effort to do. Another thing else, reducing the image footprint, you need to purge maybe essential packages out and so on. And then the integration of your own application needs to be done somehow. So you need some tooling maybe around Debian that, that solves those issues. And this is the place where we thought about uh, developing something called Elbe. So this goes back until 2007 as we had the first idea using Debian and embedded and have some tooling around it. And what we have at the moment is we describe our board support package in some kind of XML file where we say what is the result. So do you want UBI images or extended for disk images, SD card images, and so on. And we describe what packages do you want to have, what are the fine-tuning rules that should be applied after the root file system is generated, and so on. And then we put this in something, this is also automatically generated by Elbe, called the Elbe init VM, a virtual machine that ensures that everything happens reproducible. So we push the Elbe XML into this virtual machine. There runs an Elbe daemon that builds our images, that extracts the license information, that creates our source code CD that we need to give to our customers containing all those source code used inside our BSP, and uh, it generates, for example, a sysroot that you can add to any tool chain uh, to build uh, your application against this image, and it generates a rebuild CD containing all Debian binary packages that were used to generate the virtual machine and your BSP. So you can just say Elbe, create and give those ISO image and it builds all the environment up again so you can catch up in a couple of years with the development. Also the virtual machine has included a pbuilder and the pbuilder is also generated out of the Elbe XML file. So it is ensured that you have a package builder inside there that is able to generate Debian packages exactly for your target image. 
and uh, you can give any Debianized sources into this package builder and there uh, comes out a Debian binary package. So once again, what are the limitations using Debian if you use Elbe and Debian combined? So we have all those topics below uh, that we can do with Elbe, but still we have only limited number of hardware architectures supported. We um, are now able to build packages like GStreamer plugins from source, but still there are no binaries available for that because we also don't do a distribution, we just give a build environment to you. So LB limits, limits the, the, the way I, uh, yeah. So uh, what would be the benefit of a combination of using Yocto and Debian? So my, my thing is there are quite a some, some stuff that's good in Yocto. For example, the task scheduling. So even if you use Elbit to build your uh, source packages with the pbuilder, you need to know the the order, which package build first, which next, if you just change one package, okay, what are all the dependencies that I need to rebuild and so on. And therefore, Yocto is really great or a bit big because you can model those dependencies. And so task scheduling uh, is really good in Yocto. I'd like that to have in Debian for building an embedded root file system image. Also the configuration management, if I have a few similar boards, um, I need to have several shell scripts or stuff like that that generates the images for the different targets. Even if you use Elbe, you need one XML file for each target and if they share a lot, you need to maintain all those things in five different XML files, so that's also not uh, a limitation. Um, then I'd like to, to cross-compile from source. Uh, why cross-compile might be interesting for really big frameworks. For example, if we build Qt, we have really big machines with 100 plus cores, but if we build Qt in a QMO emulator, it takes a couple of hours until it's finished. If you use a cross-compiler, it's done in less than an hour. So often during development, it is really interesting to have cross-compile available. Also, the SDK generation that I get across toolchain for my application developers is really helpful. Even the SDK generation into Eclipse where I say, okay, you have this setup file, include this in Eclipse, and everything is set up correctly that you can start cross-compiling in Eclipse is a really cool thing in Yocto. On the other hand, I want to use some stuff from Debian, so I want to use the well-maintained packages. I want to use the security tracking. Uh, I want to use the binary package whenever useful because they are the, the ones that get the most testing in the world because everybody uses the same binaries. And I want to have the possibility to use the Debian sources if necessary. So if I need to rebuild something with another configure option or apply a patch, I want to use the Debian sources uh, if, uh, if necessary. So there are already existing solutions giving you this flexibility. So we have a layer uh, a, a project called MetaDebian. We have one called Ether. And I just did some kind of proof of concept hack called Nita Elbe, which is a layer uh, that also can be included in Neocto and uses Elbe as built backend. And uh, these are the three things I want to introduce to you in the next couple of minutes. And I have made a comparison table of these three tools, what is possible with which tool, and where are the limitations. So I think the biggest project is called MetaDebian. Uh, it has about 600 BitBake receipts uh, that uses uh, Debian source code from the chassis distribution and that uses uh, optimized build rules 
for using those Debian packages in embedded systems. So basically, they use the options from, Deb from Debian rules for configuring the packages. But if it doesn't make sense for an embedded pro product to have this feature enabled, they just disabled them to uh, lower the dependencies between the packages to get smaller uh, board support packages. Uh, they also use a long-term Linux kernel from the Civil Infrastructure Platform project because one of the most goals of the CIP project, uh, which is using this MetaDebian layer, is to have a really, really long time support uh, uh, in the counted in decades, not only in years. Uh, it also supports generate an SDK and cross tool chain based on Debian sources. And it's a very, very active project. It has about 2,000 commits on GitHub. Um, but if you specify your own compile options and so on, of course, it's not compatible with those existing Debian binary packages. So if you uh, modify those pack, uh, use those modified uh, packages wi with different rule settings and so then in Debian and other compiler settings than in Debian uh, then you're not compatible so you can't install some packages from Meta Debian, others from Debian. Another project out there is called Ezar. Ezar uses Debian binary packages from different uh, Debian releases and it uses uh, Bitbake as a build engine and as a configuration tool. And uh, you have the option to even build Debian packages from source inside a change root. Uh, and if you do it for a foreign architecture, so for example, if you use Ezra on a PC and you build for an ARM target, they use QEMU user to emulate uh, the target and to build your package natively. But there are also some limitations there. So it needs sudo for several tasks that are executed. So they recommend to use sudo bitbake image name and there's really happening a lot there. So this is uh, something people uh, don't like on this uh, thing. Then you have a default image size that uh, is about 300 megabyte because it's just a Debian essential. So plus your extra packages and it's not that active so it just has about 100 commits on github and um, so it uh, is nice I, it is a nice thing but i think uh, we can more or less do the same with elbe and so i thought about doing the same than isar does with elbe by implementing something called neta elbe I called it NM because if you put those two characters very close together, they look like NAM. And we are not really a meta layer like uh, the other things because in our meta, in our Neta LB layer, we don't really have bit bake receipts for compiling packages from source. We just have some kind of wrapping around bit bake to use it as scheduler, as a scheduler to schedule jobs in LB. So this is just a proof of concept tag uh, with about nine commits on GitHub from me. And, uh, but it uses the Elbe project and the Elbe project also has like um, MetaDebian about 2000 commits on GitHub and is quite big. Um, I just tested it with stretch binary packages and ARMHF, HF, but uh, I think it should also work wi with other combinations. Um, I added the option to also build binary packages from Debian source packages using the LBP builder. And uh, the output is a signed Debian repository containing all the self-built packages. And how we do that all is that Bitbake generates an LBXML file describing your uh, root file system and schedules LB image build jobs and LBP builder jobs inside this LB init 4 m 
So Neta LB also generates the license information and uh, SDK generation is currently not implemented, but it's quite easy to do because we can generate those sysroots for different tool chains with LB and uh, then you can add them to any existing ARM HF or something like that tool chain. So let's talk a bit about the architecture of this thing. So I re-implemented the base BB class because it's something completely different than Yocto. So I don't, uh, I need a uh, known ordering of the tasks and so on. Then I have a, a, a task called LB project BB class, which just ensures that my project described by files like the machine config and my image definition is uh, settled up inside the initVM. And therefore, I have a macro template for the XML file that is filled in with those information from the BitBig uh, configuration file and from the image file. Um, I also implemented a new image BB class uh, receipt. And so my simple example image just does an inherit of this image BB class. It's and this just builds also an XML file from the source XML and puts it into the init VRM and triggers the image build. Then I have written a pbuilder class which can be used to write your own receipts like I showed in the extension layer for example. You can have a simple bit big receipt like that containing the URI of your software and that trust inherits from pbuilder. So you don't have to define any build rules for that and all that happens is that this project is put into the LVP builder and we use the Debianization inside this project to build it from source. Um, so um, this is also quite nice. Um, then we have a machine configuration where you can specify the architecture and so on you want to use from Debian. Um, but of course also this has some limitations. So we are still not able to build for an architecture that is not supported by Debian. But on the other hand, you have, the same, I think, the same flexibility than in Ether. So let's have a look at the table. So we have the three uh, candidates here. And uh, of course, they have the different goals. They want to use Debian and Embedded. And so they have also a lot of similarities. So all of these three support Yocto style config management and app integration. You have uh, hardware specific software like kernel and bootloader buildable in some way in this uh, uh, different approaches. So Meta Debian and Ether, um, uh, sorry, Ether and Neta Elbe do building it inside a uh, native QEMU uh, instance and Meta Elbe does a cross compile of them. So they support it but in different ways. In all projects you can use the Debian sources to build to rebuild it. In Meta Debian they are also cross build again. The other two uses the QEMU version. So building here takes a bit longer but for example in Neta Elbe it's super reproducible because we always generate a, a new change route, install the build dependencies build the package there and extract the information. In Ether we have a change route where all packages are built. So maybe you get some influences of old package builds because they uh, keep their, their files there and then the new package is uploaded into the same root file system and built there. So maybe you can forget some built dependencies to specify also and it will work in Ether but not in Netalbe. And in Meta Debian, they just support the cross build thing. So, another thing is the default footprint. Um, 
it's the same for Ether and NetILB basically because they use the same technique to generate the root file system. Um, NetILB doesn't support uh, shrinking the root file system at the moment, so we have LB fine tuning um, to shrink it or LB copy modes, but they are not implemented in NetILB at the moment. Uh, Ether uh, supports this with the Yocto method, so you can do something like do root image append and remove some files. This is not possible in NetILB because all the image generation is done inside LB. And the default footprint of MetaDebian is already pretty small if it just is built. Um, also, the non Debian are uh, also MetaDebian is the only uh, approach that allows us building non Debian architecture. So you can basically bootstrap a new Debian from sources with uh, modified settings. What is not possible with Ether and not possible with NetaElbe. Um, also, of course, using architecture not supported by Debian is the same thing, yeah, so it's also the, the same result. Um, then you the next topic is about exporting the used to OS code. So in Meta Debian, you have all the sources that are used during the build in the download directory, like in Yocto, and you can redistribute them. In Meta Elbe, it would be easy to develop because the source CD-ROM uh, is a can be generated by Elbe. I just didn't activate this feature at the moment to increase the build, uh, to decrease the build time, but it could be make optional that for release builds, for example, the CD is generated. Uh, in Ether, we need, uh, as far as I have seen, to add some code that uh, looks which binary packages were used and download the source code, but this is also uh, possible to implement. Then we have those Yocto style SDKs using cross tool change, uh, as explained, that can be added to Eclipse or something like that for cross compiling your application. This is generatable with Meta Debian, not generatable with Ether because they say everything should be built inside our change root with native QEMO. And it would be easy to develop with Meta LB because basically LB has this support. Also, generating license information is available in Meta, Elbe, uh, in Meta Debian. They generate a CSV file containing all license information. Ether doesn't have this point. And in Meta Elbe, an XML file and a plain text file is generated containing the license information from Debian. So the next thing that is interesting is reproducibility. So how can I build the same image again after a couple of years? The Meta Debian uh, people uh, did a quite clever concept. They said every Debian source package need to be in a Git repository. Therefore, they have uh, a Docker container, I think, that can be used to clone all the reference Git uh, Debian packages into Git repositories automatically. And on each build, they tag the, the version they have built inside each package Git repository. And then if I want to rebuild a certain version, I can just uh, specify this tag again. All the versions are used as in the last build. Um, it's just yellow because you still have this Yocto problem. So if you're not running in a VM, then you have those host dependencies and so on. Uh, in Ether, it's qui quite uh, the same. You, it's not running in VM, so still you still have all those host dependencies containing dbootstrap, for example, because they call dbootstrap to, to retrieve your packages and so on. So you should put it into an VM and use a snapshot, for example, for each build. Then it would be quite safe. Uh, but then they have another problem. It's the shared change route they use for each package build. So there's a dependency on the order you trigger the builds uh, of your source packages. 
with Neta LB you should be quite safe because everything is scheduled in a VM that it re that is reproducible and we use the Debian P builder that always starts with a new change route and just installs the build dependencies and builds your package. Another thing else you, you might uh, think about is uh, there are solutions where you need a bit big file per Debian source package. This is given in Meta Debian because there you need to specify all options needed for cross compiling the package and so on. And this is not needed for either our Neta LB because we use the information from the Debianization to rebuild the package. Uh, another thing is using the Debian binary packages. That is uh, only uh, safely possible with either and Neta LB um, and not possible with Meta Debian. Another difference is the number of available Debian packages because in Meta Debian you need to write those bit big files for each Debian source package as the number of packages available is limited to about 600 source packages but remember out of a source package uh, there are generated multiple binary packages sometimes so it's not the number of binary packages here and uh, I talked to them it should cover the most important uh, packages for embedded Linux. So they, they had a look at what's needed in embedded Linux and package those stuff primarily. Um, for ESA and Neta Elbe, of course, you can use all the available Debian binary packages. And the thing resulting out of that is the effort ne needed to adapt the build system to a new Debian release. So if you want to use uh, Chassis and go, if you use Chassis and want to go to Stretch for Meta Debian, you need to adapt all those 600 bit bake receipts or possibly most of them to work with the new release. In Isa and Neta Elbe, it's basically for free because we just use the binary packages. You don't, uh, you just need to change the string and typically it works then. So you see there are basically three solutions out there and um, but we have only two use cases. So Meta Debian is good for architectures that are not available in Debian and Ether and Neta Elbe can only be used with architectures that are available in Debian. So if you uh, need a special architecture, special compiler flag, Meta Debian is really interesting. And um, Neta Elbe is in a proof of concept state, but I think it's already very powerful because it used the, the established Elbe as a backend. Um, and so I come to my personal wish list um, and then I will finish the conclusion and hopefully we have uh, time to discuss some ideas maybe out outside then because we're running quite out of time. So there is a script in Debian called rebootstrap for bootstrapping complete Debian architectures. I think we definitely should collaborate with this project because they, they already done a lot of work automating the bootstrapping work of Debian. Uh, then we should support the multi arch support for cross-compiling any modified source package uh, in Debian. Then we could also do this for self-bootstrapped architectures. And where possible, we should allow a mixed usage of cross-build Debian packages via Bitbig with the official Debian binary packages. And I think we should have reproducible builds all over Debian. There, uh, this is another project available in Debian that care about uh, having a reproducibility inside the package builds. This is something that cares about timestamps and binaries and so on. So I think we should uh, continually try to reduce the number of existing uh, tools in this field and we should collaborate here where possible. Um, my dream is having one layer 
that is able to cross-build Debian, to bootstrap De uh, to cross-build Debian packages, to bootstrap Debian from source, to allow using binary packages, and to use something like pbuilder stuff to build it natively in QEMU. Um, also, the, the bootstrapping stuff might be interesting to port to Bitbig, because Bitbig is really good in this. Uh, uh, I am just started this discussion with the rebootstrap uh, guy who wrote this script, if you could imagine uh, porting this to something like Bitbake, but we are still in progress here. Um, and then uh, it would be a really cool combination of Debian and Yocto. So now I think we ran out of time. So. If you have any questions or ideas, um, please let me just uh, outside of the room. So the slides are available on the download side uh, of the Congress. There are also all those references here available to the different projects. And now I'd like to thank you for your attention.